Welcome to the Kenny Hack. Hello everybody, welcome to the Kenny Hack. Figured I'd finally make in a personal appearance into one of my videos. Figured it's been long enough. Usually I'm just prefer to be a guy behind the camera just shooting my videos and having them be the focal point instead of trying to worry about getting all dressed up and making myself presentable and trying to appear in front of the camera kind of takes me out of my comfort zone but I figured it was about time I start popping in front of the camera once in a while and for the first video of doing this I'm gonna be doing a review of the Ortur Laser Master Pro so this is hopefully gonna be just a quick video I'm gonna be kind of unboxing it seeing what they sent me what things I see that are different right off the bat with this pro model versus the older models now I have a 15 watt and a 20 watt adjustable focus models those are what kind of came out six months to a year ago they've since come out with newer models that have a fixed focus and with those models they did fix a lot of the problems with some of the early designs like the first model I got was the 20 watt adjustable and it, I was really impressed with it. I thought I could do a whole lot with that model, but it didn't really focus very well. And I had a hard time doing the Norton method, the white tile method. I never could really get the paint to fuse in. And it wasn't until I got my 15 watt model that I started actually having success trying to do the Norton white tile method. So in my opinion, right out of the box, the old 15 watt adjustable was slightly less powered than the 20 watt, but since it had a better focus and could focus to a narrower beam, I thought my quality of prints actually improved going down to the 15 watt versus the 20 watt. Now that I got the Pro, I'm going to have three models to use. I only have two models in my laser hood right now. I have my 20, my 15, and an Ortur 3D printer. Um, I'll probably end up taking out my old 20 adjustable focus and set up the Pro in that position and kind of be using the, tro the Pro compared to my old 15 watt. I feel that's the model this Pro is going to have to beat. That model was only about $200. And if you can get, find online, find somebody to print a Z axis adjuster for it for about around $25. For $225, out of the box, very simple to set up and run. It's a great machine for the price. If at $200, it's tough to beat for what you can do with it. Now, there's some things it's not the best at. I couldn't quite get as high as speeds as I on some of the materials as I could with the 20, but it was all fairly close. Um, normally on my 20 watt, I would run newsprint dither is what I felt I did the best with the 20 watt model. On my 15 watt, I thought the grayscale turned out better on a lot of different materials. But the problem with grayscale is that it can only run about 7,000 millimeters per minute. Otherwise, the 32-bit card starts buffering out and it starts slowing down the laser head to process all the data coming in. So you can type in a 9,000 speed, but if you actually timed it, it's only really running about 7,000 millimeters per minute. So I'd always just program everything at 7,000 and try to leave it right there just so I, I knew the laser head could keep up with, and the computer program could keep up with trying to push all that grayscale data. Now I did get good results with some of the other dithers and I was able, you can run higher speeds with the old 15 watt, but I just always felt the grayscale, once you figured out how to use that and with the 15 watts finer focus, the grayscale was producing better quality images. So this video is kind of just going to be an unboxing. Like I said, going over what new parts are in here, what they sent me. I've seen people receive different things. 
and some of the other guys I've been in contact with that they received this pro model to demo. Some guys got some parts, some people didn't get others. You know, I don't really know what they sent me. So we'll get it unboxed and see what I got and what of new parts they put on there that I think will work well. What's just a cosmetic add-on that might make it look pretty, but is it really gonna be some great function to add to it to worth the price to pay for the pro versus a basic model? Now, I asked Ortur to tell me what the MSRP is going to be on this model and I never really heard back from them. I'm sure it kind of depends on where you buy it from. Different places might provide different parts into the package. So they probably really didn't want to lock in on an exact price because every site has its own supply and demand. If you've ordered some of these in the past, you'll know there's, there's some sites that are more dependable on others of how fast you'll get your laser delivered. Some places are very good about getting it to you within a week. Some places you might be waiting a couple months. And I'm not gonna name point or call anybody out. I suggest you get in the forums on Facebook, whatever model you're looking to get, join one of them user groups. I'm like in the official or tour user group and do your research, find out where the best places are to order these things from. Ask questions, everybody in the forums are usually pretty helpful. A lot of times we get asked the same questions every day, so some comments can get to be a little jokingly sometimes, but don't take it personal, it's just, we all see a lot of the same questions day in, day out, and pretty used to answering them. And you'll, you'll get pointed in the right direction Hopefully it help you make a decision whether it's worth waiting maybe a couple months to get a, the, the, the best deal or do you want to pay maybe an extra 40, 50 bucks and get it in a week or two. That'll be up for you to decide. I've ordered ones that I needed really fast so I paid the extra money and got them from the sites that deliver faster but you pay a premium. I've ordered backup parts that I didn't really care if they took two or three months to get. It was just backup material. So then I went to the sites that generally take longer, but usually offer the lowest price. So that's something I'll leave up to you to research. I don't really want to call anybody out or point names at anybody. If, you're, if you've put the research in, you'll know what's going to work for you. So, without any more jabbering away, as you know I like to do on my videos, it's hard to shut me up once I get going. Let's go ahead, I'll get all this unboxed. And so let's, let's get to that portion. Enough of staring at me anyway. So here's everything I got unboxed. Basically, I'd say this is probably about the most basic setup probably for the Pro model. There is a couple extra add-on options I think you'll probably be able to get depending on the website you order from. But I'd probably guess this is about the minimum setup. And I, as I said, I don't really know what the price is yet. But let's kind of go over what's changed. They added the chain drag for the cable system. Now this is only for the Y axis. There's a couple little hard mounts that will hold that chain drag up. And it looks like this one has the grounding system incorporated into it. If you had one of the old models, like where I live, it gets really dry air in the winter time and there's starting to get to be a lot of static discharge coming from the head, moving back and forth on these belts. And it's create a lot of static. And I heard, talk to some people that it ended up frying their machine and some people even had it fry their computers. It sent that much of electric static discharge back into the system. If you've seen one of my older videos, I just put a gator clip onto the frame and grounded it back to my power strip. And after I did that, I no longer had any kind of static discharge issues. 
They have since come out with a better, an internal grounding system where you can clip all these little wires to all the various parts and kind of grounds the whole system. But if you notice, this plug does not have a grounding plug, so it still does not ground through your home ground system. Like somewhere in here, you'll have to run this back to a ground source. And I'll probably just do like I did on my old one, just hook a gator clip from this frame over to my other machine's frame and then back to the grounding system on my power strip to keep this machine grounded. This cable here is for your Y axis. Now this one here does appear that it's going to be stiff enough. Hopefully that if you can get it zip tied into the right location, it kind of stays standing up. When I've seen the very first videos of this model, they had a very limp wire and it was kind of dragging around on the work area. And I was very disappointed seeing that. Like trying to get these wires off the work area has kind of been a problem for everybody. A lot of people went and printed these drag chains and got them installed, but that adds a lot of weight to the head. Putting that extra drag chain on here if you're trying to look at running at high speeds, it might kind of slow everything down. That's why I never put a drag chain system on my old models. I'm slinging this head around as fast as it, they'll let me go. And I was trying to keep the weight down to a minimum. The more weight you put on here, that's more momentum and mass that you have to account for that can cause distortions at the end of your print. So you always have to turn on the overscan when you get going faster. So. This one does look like, hopefully, if I can get it zip tied up in the right spot, it's stiff enough. Hopefully, it kind of stays vertical and out of the way. One thing that's different is it's a little smaller work area than the other models. The old models had a 400 by 430 work area. That's roughly was a 16 by 17. This one is a 400 by 400. They've kind of gone and printed out a little scale system. This is in inches, which I find kind of odd that it's not in millimeters. Um, let me here flip it over. Nope, there's only in inches, which here in the good US of A, that's kind of all we use. We're pretty snobby, but when you use most of these printers, everything's about done in metric. Just because when you're working with such small areas, the, the smaller metric system, the smaller spacing is a little easier to keep track of than eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, thirty second. So most everything's done in millimeters. So why they went to inches on this, I wish they had to put inches on one side, millimeters on the other, so you had the option of both both of them, whichever you're more comfortable with using. But that's more of a pretty, pretty. I don't really see much functionality in that right off hand. Most everybody prints a grid on their work area and squares the machine up to that grid. So you can just place all your material on that grid and know it's going to line up with the computer program grid. So how much I need really will use that measuring system. I don't think very much. It's, it's just a pretty thing. The new control box looks way better. It's all sealed system. Like all the other control boxes, all the circuitry was wide open. It was easy to kind of drop something in there and you might damage the circuit boards. This is all sealed in a lot better. Just has one big hookup at the end. This one also has an offline controller port. And uh, another guy I know from the forums, he also got one of these models to demo and they sent him the offline controller. It's just an SD card reader, and I'm gonna to try to get him to send me a photo of it so I can include a picture of it. I really don't need that from how I see that being used is if you already have a lot of patterns that you're comfortable in using, you've got your numbers set up, you know what you're gonna do, and maybe you have multiple units set up, you're kinda of got a little print farm going, where you don't need to have it hooked up to the computer anymore. You can just put in that SD card reader, 
say, I want to burn this project and it'll go. You no longer are like trying to get your settings dialed in. It's basically, I got everything done. I'm just going to print multiples of this same project. I don't want to be hooked to the computer anymore. Most everything I do is kind of a one of a kind, unique project. I do do some multiple runs of the exact same thing for some clients, but a lot of stuff is just a one-time burn. So I need to be hooked to the computer so I can work on getting my numbers dialed in for each project on each material. So that offline controller, you might want to kind of research more into that if it's something you really need for your setup or if it's not going to be of much use to you. Like I said, if, if you've got a bunch of sales going on and you just have two or three of these set up and want that just to put up a project and set it to go, that offline controller might be for you. If you're strictly just a hobby use and only burning one project at a time, kind of going slow, you might not have a lot of use for that offline controller anyways. And I don't know how much those are selling for yet, but definitely something don't rush. Don't think you have to get it to get started with. It's not necessary to get started into this hobby or a small print farm. This here is your little uh, height setter. You basically set this underneath the lens to the top of your work area and that sets your focal height. I've seen these little things printed out in the forums. I'm glad to see they added this. Basically, that just holds your barrel. This attaches to the frame, kind of keeps it so you don't lose your barrels. Apparently, everybody says these things like to disappear, so it's nice they included a little barrel holder for you. I might have to cut out a couple of them, slightly larger and slightly shorter, because there's some methods I use where I defocus the laser to produce different burn results. It's kind of more of an advanced technique, probably something you're not going to get into until you do a few more projects. Start off with just trying to keep your all your work projects in the most the best focus you can get. Don't worry, don't try the defocusing projects until you're a little more comfortable with stuff. Other than that, everything's pretty much the same as the other ones. It's, these are your typical belts. These aren't the highest quality. They will last you a long time. But if you look up like a 3D printer parts, you can find replacement belts on Amazon and you can buy these in like about 15 foot rolls. And they're made of, you can find ones made of a little better quality material that might last a little bit longer. And if you have, I have a bunch of that on this on backup parts. So I might be swapping out these standard belts with an upgraded belt when I put it all together. Just save me the hassle of having to change them out a year or two for now. Maybe the, the upgraded belts will last longer. All the tool systems are basically the same setup. The, the big difference is kind of here in the X axis. First, here's all the legs. Now these are no longer plastic or polycarbonate these are metal so no more breaking your legs really easy and then you know can't get it to stand flat and level so these are a good upgrade I'm glad to see they went to metal legs instead of all the plastic parts that are on here and that's all of this this is this is all anodized metal no more plastic pieces that are easy to break it should be a lot more durable and not so many little small broken parts that kind of you're waiting on pieces to get sent to you and get for repairs. So that's that's a really good upgrade that they've got rid of a lot of the plastic that was on here and the polycarbonate pieces. So that's what's the biggest upgrade I see right off the bat is this x-axis. Now they move the stepper motor off of the laser head and all that's really doing this is kind of like if you ever seen the laser master ones that were just had a single like it was a single x arm and a single y arm this kind of is the same setup as the laser master one the belting runs all the way over the back and the front connects on either side of the little truck here 
and there's a little tensioner on this side so you kind of adjust your belt tension with that it just pulls the pulley in and out from there and this all comes pre-assembled so that's gonna knock a lot of time off the assembly that was one of the toughest things about the original models was getting this assembly all put together so that that showed up all installed so that that's a big plus right there now what moving this stepper motor out to this side that's also taken a lot of weight off of this truck and that's probably why they decided that they could go to higher speeds. You know, you take all that weight off. Now this, this head can move faster without having to like account for all that mass to speed up and slow down. I was hoping that like, I've done a lot of projects at 9,000. I, I have absolutely no problem running the old models at 9,000. It doesn't scare me at all anymore. I know what it can do. I know how to set up the projects to do it with the overscan. Now this model, I think, is programmed to go up to 10,000 millimeters per minute. So it, it's a slight upgrade. Apparently, they also upgraded the firmware in this module to account for the higher speeds. They changed some of the programming in it. I don't know all the ins and outs of that. Basically, they said it's, it's supposed to handle the higher speeds and not get the distortion problems you could see on the older models. So I can guarantee you, it's not gonna take me long. I'm gonna have this thing running at 10,000. I'm not gonna get a free laser and treat it gently. It's like, I'm gonna put this thing to as hard a test as I can get it, as fast as I can get it. So you guys can get that information and decide if you're gonna wanna pay the extra money for this module. Um, I have seen it for sale on some sites up to 600, almost just below $600. So that's a huge step up in price from like my old 15 watt model that was only $200. So, I mean, there are some really nice heavy duty upgrades that will save a lot of heartache of things getting broke too easy. But is it worth being three times as expensive? It's like I said, I don't know what this specific setup would run but it's gonna have to really dazzle me on higher power and finer quality of print i know they're they've done some upgrades to this lens now this is also the 2-4 laser module so it has a 12 volt power or 24 volt power supply versus a 12 volt power supply uh, of the old units. Hopefully that increase in power translates to the, the actual burn power and we're able to run the higher speeds at lower power settings than what we could on the old modules and these things will hopefully last longer. Now, this shield is also new. I don't know the rating of this shield if it's a class three or a class five, these thumb screws can seem to get pretty tight to where like just swinging it down kind of locks them into place almost. So that's can be a little tricky. That's just me having to get used to how this thing works. So that's nice because you can kind of flip that down. And even if it's only a class three rating, that's about what these typical, these cheap little glasses they include has a class three rating, which is okay for casual use. Um, really you're looking for a class five is what I would recommend. If you can get glasses that are class five rated for these, that's a lot better eye protection. And actually it's better glass. You can actually see most colors through that glass. It's just has such a small window of blue that it blocks and blocks very well that class five is way better than the class three. Like I said, I'm, I'm assuming this is just a class three. So if you have that flip down, as long as you're not staring right at it for a long time, that should be fair to good protection. It still says always wear your eye protection when you're around these things. Never just guarantee yourself that this is gonna be enough. One thing I do notice different about this module 
is the, I think, I'd say the fan on it is slightly in, a little bigger fan. And also the cooling jacket is set up a little bit different. It has a lot more airspace down around the diode and the heat sink on it is probably oh, only half as long as what my old 20 watt was. My old 20 watt was probably about that long a heat sink. And I'm thinking they just improved the design of this heat sink that I'm sure they've re hopefully ran all their tests and know that's going to dissipate the heat fast enough running this because this that heat is what kills your diodes if you can keep your diode cool you can run them all day long they're not like a co2 that has you know limited time before they have to they have to get cooled down diodes if you can keep them cold they they run great for long periods of time so we'll kind of see how that works now one other thing I'm hopefully getting a photo of, um, I said the guy that got the offline controller, he also got the upgraded Z-axis. Now this here is a Z-axis. It does move up and down. You get a couple little thumb screws to kind of lock it in place. And this what this wasn't on my original setups. This this Z control setup kind of came out in the last generation, kind of at the start of the year. And I haven't used it, but I can tell you right off the bat, it's pretty hokey. This is not not the best setup. If you get the option to buy the upgraded Z axis, and I'm trying to get that guy to send me. A photo of the new z-axis that's built for this and it, it's built a lot more like the printed out ones it's got a big frame it's got an adjustable knob at the top that you can raise and lower it from there it's like this will work but there are a couple other pro methods i use where as the laser's running i might raise or lower the head like if i'm cutting material or if i'm doing like if you've watched my uh, Norton method on ceramic plates, the them plates have a curved edge. And if you're printing on them edges, I usually print it twice. I'll burn it once, set for the high side, and I'll start printing again, and I'll turn it down one or two millimeters. So that way it kind of prints the high and low edge at the at different different heights so it kind of gets a more even burn i couldn't do that with this setup this this setup here is not stable enough to make an adjustment on the fly you can only set this thing to the height and then lock it into place you, you couldn't can't do any kind of adjustment on the run so i'll, I'll make do with this for now i'm going to maybe see if one of my old model frames can fit onto this setup or if I can get my hands on one of the newer newer setups for this because I'm really this this is kind of di disappointing for a pro model that this is what they would still send out with this 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 is kind of the only real bad check I'd put on it just on right out of the box is this just does not impress me for a z-axis setup so but i know it does work and i'll make do with it there's just a couple applications i know it won't work for me so that's kind of what i see out of the box i'll get that together like i said um i'm not going to be able to hit a lot of different projects in such a short time i'm going to try to do some side by side Norton white tile methods. We'll do some wood projects. We'll do some painted canvas, hopefully. Maybe some painted black and white tile. Some of it might be images. Some of it might just be test patterns. A test pattern will tell you a lot when you, once you know what they do. I can tell if, how, how much better it's gonna perform just with a test pattern without even burning an image. If I can, run at a higher speed or at a lower power, 
that's what I'm looking for. I'm hoping I can still maintain high speeds, but get off of 85% and maybe get down into the 50 to 60% power range, still at the max speeds and preserve my head for even more, a longer duration. So thanks for joining me. Uh, as usual, the video turns out longer than I want, but I'm hopefully I'm getting you a good look at what's in this package and maybe what you're expecting, what other add-ons you're maybe going to want to be looking for if, when you're buying it. Like I said, right now, this offline controller, that's put some research into that, whether it's something you're really going to need. And if at all possible, get the upgraded Z-axis versus this little, this, this model. This only has about an inch and a half of travel. Um, you can see it's not very smooth. It does have, I think this one does have a double clamp. I think when this first came out, it only had a single screw to hold it in place. So at least they've added a second one to get a little more secure. Because if I'm zinging this thing around at 10,000 millimeters per minute, if these things come loose at all, it's going to ruin my project. So that's them got me nervous. Um, but won't know until I put it through its tests. So thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to be trying to get out all these videos in the next couple of weeks of anything I try to do with this and problems I have. And hopefully that'll help you make a decision if it's something you want to add or something you want to start with. And we'll see where it goes from there. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next video.